Hi, Dave Scotland for cgswat.com. Uh, today we're going to take a look at a gallery effect that uh, I've been looking at a couple of different options. It was suggested to me by a regular on the site, uh, Leonard Wendlin, and um, he had a need for a sort of a fly-through gallery, and he's had a look at some tutorials elsewhere on the web, and they never really gave him what he was looking for. And I'm not even 100% sure whether this is what he was looking for, but it's an option that you can have a look at. Um, a lot of these fly-through type image galleries tend to use the card dance effect. And um, unfortunately, that relies on you creating a absolutely huge still image with all of your uh, individual images placed on it. And uh, that can run into some pretty, uh, pretty, o pretty big overheads in rendering and and processing. So this is, I mean, there's alternatives to this effect, and I'll just, I'll just play it for you. There are definitely some alternatives to this effect, um, but this is something that you can get to work fairly quickly, and uh, and sort of have it up and running fairly quickly without a, a, a lot of uh, rendering and and memory overheads. So basically, it's just uh, flying through uh, some images. Um, I've got some uh, some wedding images that I'll be using, and uh, but feel free you can use any image you want uh, or any series of images you want. One thing I do suggest though is if you're going to try this for the first time, you probably keep your amount of images a little bit lower. I've got about 29, 30 images in this effect, but you would probably do better to uh, keep that on the low side just until you sort of get your head around how the effect works. And uh, we'll be using trap code particular to, to drive this effect. And uh, so without further ado, we'll, uh, we'll get started. Okay, so I'll just delete that output. And what you can see in the project window here, I've got my 30 images there. Uh, you'll notice that uh, they're consecutively numbered. It do, you don't have to do that at all. It just makes it a little bit easier to sort of follow if there are any individual changes that I need to make to certain images. I can I can sort of follow where those where those images are in the uh, in the order. And a very handy application to do a batch rename is Adobe Bridge and uh, one of the new features of Adobe Bridge allow you to set mul select multiple images and do a batch rename um, in accordance with whatever project you're doing or, or whatever your needs are so it's a very handy application you used to have to use a third party application to do that so I've got my images there I've just got them in a subfolder um, and we'll get started uh, we'll create a new composition I tend to click down here on the new comp button and the composition we'll be using is I'm just going to go pal d1 but I'm just going to change it to square pixels just to keep things uh, sort of uniform and the effect is fairly long um, because it, it needs time to sort of build and come towards camera and then and then fade out uh, so I'm going to go I'm at 25 frames per second so I'm going to go 500 frames, which is uh, 20 seconds, and we'll go OK to that. So we've got our new new composition there, and before we jump into the main comp, we'll just rename that uh, Master Comp. And before we jump into that, we need to pre-comp our pictures. So if you grab the first picture, hold Shift and click the last picture that'll select every picture there every image and we're going to drag it down onto the comp button and we're presented with this new composition from selection and what we're going to do is create a single composition the still duration of one frame and we're going to sequence the layers and use dimensions of the first image is fine I've uh, pre pre done the dimensions so that they're all matching and if we go OK to that we now have a composition that has our images at one frame. Now you will notice that there's a bit of an issue here. Notice that when I go to one frame, I'm into that into that first uh, that second image, 
and then when I go to the second frame I'm further into the third image and by the time I get down here I'm literally skipping an image now I'm not a hundred percent sure why Adobe uh, After Effects does this um, but I don't think it's ever not done this for me um, it's something that I've always had to sort of get in and hand tweak and so that's what we're going to have to do here um, if I bring just slide this in so we can see what we're see what we're doing if I use the page down page up to just go one frame in what I can do is drag well they're all selected I've dragged it out and now I'm sure that they're all one frame long and if I use the uh, shift or control and just click that first image so that we've got the rest of the images selected I can just drag that across and then shorten it up there and go to the next frame uh, control click that one drag it across and shorten it up there go to the next frame drag it across and shorten it up and just drag that back and you'll see that it starts to get a bit fiddly so I'm gonna go ahead but these see these first three frames that's that's basically what we're looking for we need a frame to fill we need a layer to fill one second each frame so I'm just going to uh, pause the tutorial I'm going to go ahead and do that and you'll have to do that as well okay so I've got that done what you may have noticed through that process is that when you get down to about 24 or 25 you run out of composition and that's inherent in that error in that problem because it hasn't created a frame uh, a full frame for each layer it shortens up the composition to fit all of the all of the layers and uh, about it, it, I think it shortens it up to about 24 25 whereas I know that I've got 29 images all I have to do is go into the composition settings and make sure that my number is 29 in duration and uh, then you'll find that all of your images uh, fit on the timeline so if anyone out there knows why that problem occurs feel free to, to uh, drop me a line on the blog and uh, and let me know or some sort of workaround that'd be great okay so we've got our images now we've got uh, one for each second of the 29 second timeline and they're consecutively ordered and that's what we're going to need when we move into trap code so we'll just go back to our master comp now and we're going to create a new layer solid and we're going to call it image particles and we'll make it the uh, 72576 and we'll go OK so now we're going to add an effect we're going to, I tend to right click on the effects controls and we're going to bring up trap code particular and straight away we've got the uh, default low poly spheres to uh, to see how it's all working and we're going to change some of these settings so if you go into your emitter and the first thing we need to do we'll just down this to uh, 10 particles per second for now and the other thing we're going to do is take the velocity off we'll set that to zero velocity random I'll just drag this out a little bit velocity random down to zero and velocity from motion to zero and we're going to change the emitter type to a box and you'll see now that, that the particles aren't moving off the box they're disappearing simply because the particle life if we go into particles here the particle life is at three seconds and we want our particles to last um, so that they don't pop off screen so let's just change the particle life now to we'll say 15 seconds should do us um, but if they do start to pop off screen just increase that to 20 seconds and then you're guaranteed that no particles will pop off screen but 15 should be fine because some particles will actually move past the camera um, and and that should be fine for them to disappear we won't see them okay so we've got our particles there and if we go right to the end of the timeline we can judge how big our emitter is and let's just scale it up a little bit we'll go up to about 150 I think is good and we'll make sure we're sort of square 
So go 150 on the Y as well. And we'll leave the emitter size at 50 for now uh, in Z, Z depth. And that's going to be fine. And the next thing we need to do is get some movement hap happening. So let's slide down to our physics. And what we want to do is make sure there's no gravity, which there's not. And we want Z wind to be in the negative so that it comes towards camera. If it was in the positive, it would move away from camera. So we're just going to type in there minus, let's say minus 50. And you'll see now that our particles are moving towards the camera. And you'll notice also that, see how they are, they are sort of popping off near the camera? So let's go ahead and change our life to 20, just to make sure that that's fine. Okay, so that's the basics for particular uh, motion. We'll, we'll be tweaking as we go. Um, I tend not to script these settings. I, I like to sort of do a bit of problem solving, um, a la Nick Campbell over at Grayscale Gorilla. Um, and I find it much uh, more beneficial for the learner to see how we're, how we're solving these problems as we, as we move along and which areas to look into um, when various issues uh, pop up. Okay, so we now, to now need to change our particle type. So if you go into the particle, particle type, and we're going to change that to custom. And just before we do that, we need to bring from the project window, we need to bring our wedding pre-comp or our image pre-comp down into, into the uh, master comp. We're going to hide it, and that way it's available for us to choose in particular. So we've gone custom and now in the custom rollout we're going to select that wedding image. It will come up with a warning. Um, it, it is recommended that you use this but uh, we're going to break that recommendation. So if we go OK to that and what we're going to do is change from current time to random still frame. And you'll see now that we have images instead of those little dot particles. Okay, so just at a glance there, it looks like our emitter might be a bit big because I'm, I'm, I'm basically going for that effect that it's sort of coming from a central point. So we're just gonna change that. We'll drop that down about 80 by 80. And that looks pretty good. And we can probably increase the Z depth to 100. Okay, so those particles are working fine now. You can see that they're moving past camera and I'll just do a RAM preview just to see how they're uh, how they're moving and that's working pretty pretty well yeah, it's, it's moving a little slow so let's go down into our physics and air and we just want to decrease that wind a little bit more. If we come up to about 150 we'll be able to see we really want these images to start to be near the camera at about 150. So we'll just decrease that air but at the same time we don't want them to fly by the camera too fast. And that's that's not too bad. It's still a little bit quick. So let's uh, let's decrease that. Let's go to just 100 for now. And oh, minus 100. Okay. So that's working nicely. And what we'll do now is set up a little bit of. Uh, we might just bring the emitter in Z depth a little bit, a little bit closer to camera. We've got minus 150 there, and that's working fine. Okay, so if we come through to about, let's come through to about 50 frames. What we want to do is slide down to our visibility, and we're going to wind our numbers. We'll set the far start uh, visibility to, let's say, 100 for now. But we want to wind the 
far vanish point down just until they disappear just on probably 700 no, 600 and that looks good then we're going to set our fast start fade back up now to about 450 450 and that's going to give us a bit of a fall off between the 450 and the 600 so that as they come in you'll see that they fade on and they fade on relative to their distance to camera using that vanishing point now at the moment we're looking pretty good for collision right up until we get to that that frame there it's colliding with the camera so we're going to have to use uh, a little bit of uh, turbulence a spherical field and what we're going to do is we'll just set the strength for the time being to 50 and we're going to switch on the visual visualize file and we're going to just move you'll notice we get this red radius and what that is is a spherical uh, turbulence field or basically when the particles come near this field they sort of bounce off or change direction they bounce relative to the strength um, and the feather um, but if I want them to slightly move away um, and so basically what we're going to do is try to set this spherical field up so that it's near the camera and uh, of course we could do this mathematically but it's quite easy to do it by eye and uh, so what we want to do is just get this Z position we'll, we'll decrease the radius down to about 20 and we'll get this Z position so that it's right near camera and see how it disappears pops off there and speaking of camera we better just quickly create a camera so that we know what we're actually looking at is an in-camera shot so we'll just go layer new camera and we'll go for a 20 millimeter. That's going to give us a little bit of a uh, little bit of fall off out on the uh, edges there. And you'll notice that straight away we are seeing a different view. So let's bring up our let's bring up our uh, emitter there again. Our sorry, our spherical field. And let's drag it back and do the same. Just sort of line it up so that it just pops off screen and then bring it back slightly. Um, you can highlight it and use the arrow key I think that's going to do do fine and we're just going to decrease the strength down to about 10 we'll make it 25 just half that 50 and bring the radius down to about 10 and you'll slightly see that uh, that effect there Okay. Now you'll see how much of a difference the look of the particles have now that the camera is in the scene. So the first thing we need to do is increase the size in the particles here. So we're just going to increase the size of the images just so that they're a little bit more a little bit more readable. Now you'll see here there's an image in the foreground that looks transparent and that's down here in the visibility as well because just like we did the uh, far vanish there is a near vanish and what we want to do is just wind that out because we're going to use a little bit of camera camera uh, depth of field to blur those images okay so so you'll see here now we've got this image that's coming straight towards camera and this is where we need to, to sort of tweak the spherical field settings um, if we just wind the strength up to about 40 and we're just going to increase the radius incrementally probably 15 might no 20 and you'll see that if I scrub through slowly that images are moving notice this image here as I uh, step through it moves to the to the right but then it pops back and that that is the re that is because our spherical uh, field 
is just a little bit too far into the shot. It needs to come back towards the camera just slightly. So if we just increase the uh, Z depth, decrease, sorry, and just increase the radius to about 30, we should now have images moving away from the camera. Here's a good one. Yep, drops down. They, they drop apart. And so you can see the effect that, that is created there, that as they start to come towards camera, they move away from the camera, and then we don't get images penetrating the camera. And that's exactly what we need. Okay, so the images are, are working fine. We now need, need to just adjust our vanishing point. So we'll go to those first couple that are created, and we'll go to our far vanishing point, and we just need to we'll wind this back down just so that we can see what we're doing and we just need to bring it up so that they're just off shot 200 maybe 250 just so that we can't see them pop on and we're seeing a couple pop on there so we'll go a little bit further we'll go 200 and that way they'll fade on yep and we want to give it a sort of a fall off. So if we go 150, it gives us about a 50 pixel fall off there where they fade on. And that's going to work nicely. So while we've got an image quite close to camera, um, we'll go, I think I saw one back here. Yep, this one just here. I'm going to go into our camera setting and just before we do we'll go into the particular go right to the bottom and we'll make sure that the full render is set for after effects depth of depth of blur or depth of field blur and now we'll go into our camera and we'll bring up our aperture blur focus here and depth of field we'll switch that on and you'll see straight away we get that effect there now we could probably reduce it just slightly. Let me go to about 15% is fine. And that way any image... Oh, you'll see that it's getting blurry back into the shot here. So let's just take that blur level back up to 50 and just change the focal distance. And if we slide the focal distance down Ooh. let's pull it there and then the aperture just bring it back a little bit we'll bring that image a little closer to camera so it's blurry there but we don't want it blurry there so let's just Let's just change the aperture. That looks pretty good. And then as it comes closer, it gets blurry. So that's exactly what we're looking for. And the effect is working fairly well. So, the last thing we need to do, we'll just close that uh, layer there. The last thing we need to do with the particular is to switch off the particles. So if you come through to about 300, it'll do, and you click a keyframe, go to one frame forward, and then wind the particles down to zero, and then I'll just hit U to bring up those keyframes. What I can do is go to the last frame, and then grab both these keyframes and move it, and just until that, just until those images disappear and that's it there. So now what you'll get is the images will stop emitting and peter out to nothing. So that's working fine. Looks like everything is uh, in order. And like I said before, there are alternatives to this effect, and you'll see one of the downsides to this, because it's using a random selection of the layers as the particle type, we're getting repeated images. 
but you know that's not altogether too bad um, because they're moving um, you get a sort of a second chance to see that same image and it's it's altogether it's, it's not taking away from the effect okay so we're looking pretty good there and you'll know you might have noticed in the uh, in the master render that I had before that I had a little bit of uh, effect on the on the images themselves so if we just go into the wedding uh, image sequence here. I'm just going to select that first image and I'm going to right click and bring up layer styles and I'm going to put a bevel and emboss on it and if I just zoom in a little bit there we go you'll see now that I have a bevel and emboss around the edge here but uh, just before we we work on the bevel settings I'm just going to add another layer style of stroke and if I bring up the stroke settings, what I can actually do, what I can actually do here is set it for inside and then just scale it in just to look like a photo. We'll change this to uh, change the color to a white and then just select in a yellow and just bring it in slightly because you never really want to use true white and uh, that's going to work nicely and that that way we can also see this bevel and you'll see it's a little bit soft on the edges so let's just have a quick look at the bevel settings there um, we'll bring the size down to about two make it three and just increase the depth depth slightly and just play with these settings until you get something that you like and that's probably good enough so there's our image there and we can check it back in the master comp we can find that find that image and uh, hopefully it's one that's been selected yeah there it is there on the left hand side so it seems to be working fine over there and uh, we're, we're happy with that feel free to tweak these level of these uh, layer effects as much as you want but what we want to do here now is just highlight the layer style control C and then grab all of the remaining layers control V and then back in our master comp you'll see that we now have a photo type look on the images you could put a gradient overlay uh, to give it a bit of a sheen um, there's a number of different uh, styles that you can add to the individual images to make them read a little bit more like photos. Um, and if, of course you could uh, put an effect on each image. Maybe you want to go for a sepia look or, or whatever you want. You would do that in the pre-comp back here. Okay, so that seems to be working nicely. And the last thing that we need to do is just uh, finish the scene off a little bit. We're going to add a new solid and we'll just call this BG and we'll slide it to the bottom we'll just isolate it for now and what we'll do is give it a an effect of generate ramp and we're going to go with a radial ramp and we're going to make the outside color here a sort of a bluey light blue wedding type type feel probably a little bit more contrast and the inside color will be a white but like I said before try not to use a pure white just come in just slightly on the on a yellow or another color and then we're just going to bring this down to our center and then we'll bring our outside one out just a little bit just gives a bit of a sort of a blue vignette and we'll just bring our particles back up see how they're working on that background yeah not too bad and the other thing that we did is we'll create a new solid we'll make it black and we're just going to double click on the rectangle tool which brings up a rectangle mask we'll control t and resize it just to the sort of dimensions of cinema bars and then we're going to flip it to inverted and that way we have uh, sort of a cinema effect but 
what I thought really made the uh, images sort of pop and uh, and made them a little bit more interesting in the 3D space was to move that down below the particles and that way the uh, images sort of pop out of the cinema bars there now you will see also if I slide in here and just move over there is a bit of fringing that happen that is happening there and that could be caused by either the camera or a little bit of a problem with uh, particular but it's very easily fixed if you highlight the image particles layer and just hit S for scale and we're going to increase the scale to 100.5 and that should be enough to just drag it off there's a bit of a fringe there so let's go 101 and you'll see that it doesn't actually take anything away from from our image uh, from our effect and there you have it so there's our uh, flying gallery and I'll just give that a render and as I said before um, I strongly suggest that you use probably about oh, 10 images would be a good place to start just to get your head around the effect get your head around how the wind is driving the motion how the spherical field is keeping the images away from the camera and also the vanishing point is is causing the images to fade on um, and also that little bit of animation where we switched the image emitter to zero uh, just to allow the images to stop creating towards the end there and to allow us to come to a, a blank screen with no particles so that's one way of doing this there like I said there are other ways of doing us doing it uh, one good way would be to use a little bit of uh, expression scripting to distribute images in a comp in 3d space and then once you've got them distributed basically fly a camera through that image um, it's a little bit more fiddly uh, it's something I might even have a look at later on as an alternative to this style and uh, and put up a tutorial for for people to have a look at that as an alternative and also as a bit of introduction to scripting for 3d space distribution um, but the effect seems to work nicely and uh, i think it's a good starting point for you to do uh, to make it into a sort of a larger project um, you could replicate this project and then in a master uh, you know a, a master comp to bring all of the sub comps together you could offset the timing and literally have this go for a full two or three minutes so uh, feel free to give me any feedback on the blog um, any suggestions and as I as I mentioned before if you if anybody has come across that uh, that pre comping with the uh, still frames and why they don't fit to solid framings um, I'd love a little bit of feedback it's a problem I'd like to get my head around and that's it for this one so until next time, bye for now.